Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Between Two Fans. You are joined by myself, Daniel Skoltz, and Stevie P. And we are in the middle of the best sporting event in the four-year cycle. It's the Olympics, where we become mm -hmm. absolute um, you know, masterclasses of sports that we just don't understand. But before that, we're going to quickly touch on a bit of Curry Cup, a bit of the cricket that's been going on around the globe before we do a real deep dive into the Olympics. We're going to be talking about South Africa's three medals so far. We've got Correct. one fighting bonds, the Blitzbox, of course, Tatiana Schoonmarker, but now Smith, excuse me, who now brought home the gold last night. Moving on to how Ankani Simbine is going to do this weekend. Um, Prudence Echodiso, we've got predictions on the on the hockey. We're going to tell you how Sarah Baum's doing in the surfing. Now, the Chad Close are turn. Chad Close, there we go. Matthew Sates, it goes on and on and on. And of course, that on all the South African side as well, some of the biggest stories like the 1.2 billion investment into the Seine so that sewage doesn't flow through it. However, it is still delayed and they were meant to have actually started by now, but it has um, been pushed back because there's so much rain and now there is sewage in the Seine. Um, Stevie, how are you doing on this fine morning? Listen, it's it's sunny out. It's I've uh, I've been watching fencing. I watched handball last night. I've got a couple of opinions I've got on on, on a few of these events. I'm going to throw about later. I, you know, this is me. I absolutely love 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 the Olympics. It's becoming a thing every night. Basically, I, I finish up in the office. I grab my laptop and basically go jump in 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 the lounge with my aunt and basically just flick through like olympics for three or four hours it's yeah. like prime prime as a sports fan it doesn't get any better you know literally every single time it's a half time you flick over to watch a bit of swimming but it watched artists of gymnastics last night you know one of the chinese guys fell off the yeah. bar gymnastics. twice done japan getting japan, the japan win the win i mean you, that, that poor guy's and now he's gonna have to try and go back to china and find him in the mine <laughs> soon it's it's tough out people's lives are being made but also a lot of people's uh, careers are, are finishing so it's yeah i'm in absolute sporting heaven at the moment yeah my, i think one of my personal highlights was the judo men's where the man who placed um who came third managed to just clinch the bronze in the third fourth playoff um, while celebrating dislocated his shoulder, um, <laughs> which then resulted in a great image where both the person who lost that um, match to him and him were crying head down on the floor for two different, very different reasons. Yeah. One for a dis dislocated shoulder <laughs> and one because they haven't got the gold of the Olympics. But yeah, it sums up the Olympics. And it's been a very controversial Olympics already, which is also you know part of the fun. You know, lots of uh, reaction to the, to the opening ceremony. Uh, which was memorable of nothing else. It was quite a weird opening ceremony. Take yeah, over the actual content. The fact that it was like along the river, then to this place, then to this place, there was ballet stuff, then there was you know, hard metal, and then there was this, then there was boats, then there was rough around the dull, all of a sudden, it's having a flame. It was chaotic. Yeah, Snoop Dogg, to, to, Snoop Dogg uh, made an yeah. appearance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't know what his ties to, to, to France are. Yeah. Lady Gaga as well. Is she French? Um, no, she's American. No. Yeah. And, so. and, then, and then the goat Celine Dion just coming back and finishing yeah. off the, the, the opening ceremony and what was a pretty iconic moment as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, so. my biggest shock was you know, South Africa, you always expect us, okay, like three hours in, finally, we get down to yeah, yeah. You know, the S alphabetically and you see them. All of a sudden, well, straight up between third, Afghanistan and Albain Albania, Afrique yeah. de Sud. I just saw the bu buggers going crazy with the flags. I was grateful because I had to head out, so I otherwise would have missed them. So... Can we talk about the fact that they put some like like we shared a boat, like a pretty large boat with like two or three countries, and then all of a sudden there was like Congo with like they're five people. I'm like this little dinghy, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's just like wow. No, some folks <laughs> were really excluded to the rubber ducks. Um, yeah, it was tough times. No, they, they, I think they, they they go and show how much they care about you. Unfortunately, um, that, I mean we we did get to share share boats. At least it was it was a big enough one um, for everyone, but. Stevie, let's quickly jump into the predictions from last week. And mm, those who are new around here, um, we do three predictions on three different sporting events each week, and it is the race to 15. So it is currently going into last week. It was 2-2. Um, sorry, not 2-2, 12-12. Um, so really heating up in that race. And the loser has got to wear a shirt of the um, winner's choice. So... For me, I know I'm going to get Stevie straight into that Arsenal jersey. Um, but the predictions were the first one, Stevie, was uh, the Blitzbox. 
Mm. And we predicted where they might finish. And Jeepers, uh, my prediction of fifth and your prediction of third. Um, after the first two games, I, I had a bit of confidence. I'm not going to lie. Mm. Um, obviously, everyone will know by now, historic win for the Blitzbox against all odds coming back um, from what was a near certain early exit from the from the group stages. Um, big win against Japan and then um, going on to get the bronze. But we'll, we'll dive into a little bit more of that um, later. But that's 1-0 to Stevie. Then we predicted on West Indies versus England, the third and final um, test match between the two nations. The series was really done 2-0. Um, and England clinched that one by 10 wickets. Absolutely um, rolled them and a very convincing one for them. Stevie, your prediction was um, by seven wickets and mine was by five. So... You, once again, get that, which gives you an unassailable lead going into the final one. Um, nonetheless, you won that one as well. The Sharks versus Lions. That ended up 35 points to 22 in the Curry Cup over the weekend, um, which you were there for and there to see and grin at as you saw my... Well, I was there, but not wrong. so much in mind. You know, I was physically okay. there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, the, but the, you know, the Lions going on to lose that one. Um, by 13 and we both predicted a, a Lions win so um, well off the mark but the rules are you are closer so it's a, it's a, it's a three sweep win for you and that takes you to a 13-12 leave, uh, lead excuse me um, going into the final you know that like weekend. the way that the way that the weeks work you you could very well be sitting in an All Blacks jersey the week we play the All Blacks the way Ooh. we're going here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I hadn't even considered you, you you'd sweep to that. Um, yeah, well, listen, you know, anything's on the cards. Anything's on the cards. Um, but yeah, TV, yeah. let's let, let, let's not dive into um, the Blitzbook performance because Jeepers, that was something that was against the odds. Yeah, no, no, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in a bit. I think I think the best thing to discuss because this is a basically an Olympic special because there's just too much Olympics to talk about, um, and we're going to be here for a long time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of a, something different. We're going to do a bit of a news flash segment and basically just go through the results over the weekend of the stuff that we're kind of uh, monitoring at the moment, which is your cricket, your 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 rugby. There's not really any football, so we don't have to worry about too much about that. We'll worry about that more in two weeks' time when the Prem gets mm -hmm. back. So we're going to do a very quick overview, and then we're going to dive into Paris 2024. So we'll start with the rugby and uh, the Cheetahs. I'll tell you what, this was an epic game. If you've got the time, go watch the highlights. Cheetahs were, I think, about 20 points ahead and the Griffins came back to within two points of a win. 47 points to 45. One doth not simply go to Valcom on a Friday afternoon no. for an easy time. <laughs> you know, it's a bit like Kimberley. You know, you get there and it's like change rooms that haven't been uh, revamped since, you know, the 1600s. Yeah. Uh, you know, I feel that, you know, if you were to play on a basketball court, it would probably be better for you. Um, so it's, Yeah, it's, it's one of those where you see there. players putting on um, tape and skins that not, not for any sort of injury, just to prevent their skin from actually falling yeah. off their body just when they um, enter a ruck. Yeah, correct. No, it was tough over there. Uh, we then saw the Sharks beating the Lions 35 points, 22. Very disappointing game. The Lions packed and ready pitch up. Um, some very nice formats, though, from the Sharks. Um, a couple of the youngsters, uh, Urenzo mm -hmm. Julius, two tries on debut. Um, it's Lethal Best as well on debut as well. Battle with Kikani, the, the, the young number four as well. So some nice, but I mean, a bit of a Lionel Kunia masterclass. Um, so good to see. I, he does it every now and again. Um, yeah. You know, he, he, he'll kind yeah. of be absent for like an entire like season. And then he'll roll back. Yeah, one one game where he just sort of takes control. And that's kind of what he did this past weekend. The Bulls beating West Pirates 50 points to 34. High scoring affairs at the moment in the Curry Cup. All, the, all these games over the past weekend going above 50 points. Um, and then Puma's finishing the weekend with a 66 26 win over the Greek quiz. Um, so the big one. So the big ones in terms of this weekend, the Chiefs taking on the Bulls on Friday. It should be a good game to watch. Puma is taking mm. on Sharks on Saturday at home. Western Province will host Griffins and the Greek quiz will have the Lions on Sunday. If we do look at the logs at the moment, Bulls on the top, they are four from four with 18 points. Chiefs are just behind them. Um, three from four with 15 points uh, tied with the Pumas who are behind on points difference. You then go to the Lions with 13. The Sharks, that was their first one of the tournaments. So they have nine points. Province with eight points. Greek was with seven. And uh, Griffin's currently sitting with just the two points. So long time, long way to go still in the Curry Cup. I'm not even at the halfway spot, um, but uh, already a couple of early favorites are coming in. And, and, I, and I wonder, do you think the Bulls might have a point to prove, given the fact that they haven't won a trophy in about like two, four years now? It's true, actually. They, I think they they wouldn't have, but um, 
certainly I think it it means that you know some a couple more question marks get put on the first team having not got it over the line so I mean particularly from a player's point of view and Jake White I think um, I mean I don't think he's actually the first team coach for the Curry Cups or, or no, it's not. Like. Yeah, it's so no, it's not it's pure. But it's, yeah. I think it's more it's more about this, the franchise, right? Yes, they, 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 they are the team that what historically was commonly known to to win trophies in South Africa and the dominant force of club yeah. rugby. Um, but for me, it's it's always just so hard to look past the cheaters in the Curry Cup. It's just it's heritage, it's Curry Cup heritage, right? South African rugby heritage, and they seem to just get it done, mm. um, no matter what. So, it'll be interesting to see if they they're able to do that. Obviously, one versus two this weekend, so that's going to be that's going to be a, a big one deciding um, who might um, place first to qualify for that home final um, for the knockout stages. Um, but Stevie, let's jump into um, the cricket that's been happening around the globe, and not much, if we're being honest. Um, a bit of a the hundred going on, a couple T Twenty series is here and there, but not too much South African cricket. But there has been a India versus Sri Lanka series. They are playing three T Twenties and three ODIs. They're two. Um, T20s in at the moment and, t- and India have won both of those the first one by 43 runs and then the second one um, by seven wickets that was um, by Duckworth Lewis method um, really they only actually batted for 6.3 overs in that one ended up 81 for three and with the target of um, 61 um, they managed to get ahead of it just and they have their third one um, which I believe is today um, yep. So that'll be the one before the ODIs. And then, of course, as we previously mentioned in the predictions, the final test match of um, England versus West Indies. And obviously something that we've been keeping our eye on because West Indies are soon to be touring South Africa. I'm not sure. If, will they be going Hello home around. before they arrive? Well, that, no, we're playing in the West Indies. We've left. Oh, sorry. We're going. We're going to the West Indies. Yeah. My bad. My yeah. bad. So we're already so there. Come home they're, and they're going also... back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're they they're on the way. They're, they're already there. The squad at the part I think last week Friday. The SA, the SA squad. Um and yeah, West Indies after going three 0 down. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully we hopefully don't respond too too well because we could really use a test win a test series win over there. Yeah. No. To be fair, I think both of these teams are looking to really solidify a type of identity in what were both previously real you know strongholds in, in in the test scene um and now and now struggling so it's i just i'm so glad we have a test match cricket again it feels like it's yeah. been forever and it has been i think it's been about like what six months or so it's just it's so sad but we love it and can't wait to see who kind of steps up there um for the boys in, in West Indies. And that is only two matches, unfortunately, not even three. So yeah, but we'll take what we can get. Yeah, true. We can't, biggest can't be choosers. The nice thing is we at least we are actually playing quite a lot of test cricket between now and like, I think it's January or February. We've actually got like three or four different series. So for a set, for a nation that plays next to no test cricket, we've actually got a little bit of a, a busy schedule for, yeah. for a change. It'll be good um, to start off well. Right, Dan? So that's so that's there's your, there's your sporting news flash. Let's dive into Paris 2024. Mm-hmm. And it all started before the actual every ceremony, even with uh, the sevens, where the blitz box and um it's been a bit of an emotional roller coaster. So got beaten by Ireland before being beaten by New Zealand mm. to be no wins from two on day one. Um they then went on to beat New Zealand. In the quarterfinals, after hammering Japan, and uh, all of a sudden found ourselves in in in, in a semi final. Yeah. Before we talk about performances, I think no, I think we do, no, say we well, we beat New Zealand in the quarterfinal. No, having been New Zealand, yeah. So then all of a sudden on Saturday we're in the semi final, and, and that's what you want to be because then you got two opportunities in the middle. You know, we, yeah. and we did. We lost the semi final to to France, um, and and then beat uh, we beat Australia. Uh, in the bronze medal match. Uh, and then shout out to France who beat Fiji. Fiji, by the way, were 15 from 15 games won in the Olympics going into that Saturday. Um, and the first time they've ever lost a match in the Olympics was in that final. So France has uh, has got the business all of a sudden. If you guys are into rugby Twitter, it's been alive, <laughs> to say the least, with the DuPont greatest of all time chats. I think it's uh, whenever time. DuPont ste- steps on the field, though, right? It's just yeah. everything just bubbles up to the surface. And and you know the the the, the claws come out 
shall we call it? No, they do. And, and, and I don't think we're going to get too fast into the debate. So I think I've, ugh, the problem is you can never, first of all, it's so difficult to, to compare across um, generations, for example. Um, it's just difficult to compare across, for example, position stuff like that. You know, you'll talk about Anthony Dupont being the greatest of all time, but being a scrum off, for example, or the likes of like your wings, stuff like that, even flanks, they can generally make switches between 15s and 7s, for example. They've got mm-hmm. the option... You know, um, they they do tend to score tries. They do tend to be involved in the more creative mm. stuff. It's that's more appreciated. You know, which is why you're never going to you've never ever seen a world player of the year be a prop. Yeah. So it's such it's such a, it's such a complicated conversation, and I, and I think it's been a bit stupid to be honest. In the last week's worth of, you know, yeah. the New Zealand South Africans have almost kind of united in there. We've got to try and make sure that Anthony <laughs> Dupont is not considered the goat because he hasn't won a World Cup and he yeah, hasn't yeah, toured yeah. outside of, of of Europe really. You know, um, but at the end of the day, it's it is phenomenal for him to have been able to do, have done that. He he couldn't deliver France a World Cup, and so to be part of a seven yeah. side that that delivers a gold medal is very very cool. I do feel a little bit sorry for the other sevens players. Uh, I mean, Stephen <laughs> uh, Perez Ido Martin has been absolutely cooking for our French side for a long time. He was phenomenal in those first two days, hmm. um, and it's kind of like now as well. It's just entered upon. That's the only reason they won, which is a bit yeah, it, it's there. a bit short sighted. But there's there's also Something to be said. To be fair, with Anton Dupont, he's not a like he's quite a quiet dude, actually. Yeah, you know? yeah. He's not that outspoken. Um, and and except, except, of, except, 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 like, except when it comes to the referee decisions of the quarterfinal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about that after the semifinal. He <laughs> that's one thing he didn't want to shut up about. But um, yeah. alas, uh, uh, what I mean is rather in the camp, I don't think he mm. walks in and, and and demands all the attention and and says everything must run off of me. And I think that type of mentality allows and and his stature allows everyone else in in the French team to say, listen, this guy is a freak of nature. If he yeah. was the fifteenth player, he would also be in the sevens team. Like he's not just here because of his name. He is yeah. ridiculous. Like a, a try and an assist in the final. Like he's he's just incredibly talented. And I do think there was a edge of belief that he was able to give that French sevens team to, you know, help them be like, listen, Oaks, let's, let's go get it done here. Like yeah. this, is, this is what we were meant to do. And probably for him, it was a, a you know, a, albeit not quite the same, but a little bit of closure, of, I guess the world cup having yeah. been won some, some sort of gold medal, um, perhaps not the one he, he craved the most, but um, in terms of the goat debate, I think it's just, one of those when it's all said and done, that's when you begin, or that's when you can really accurately look at these conversations. To say that he can't be considered is, I just think, not true because, in if you look at his career trajectory, it's hard to say that he he still probably has two World Cups in him. So that's two more opportunities yeah. to get essentially what's like the monkey off the back. Everyone was arg- argument against Lionel Messi was not being the goat. Didn't have a World Cup. Didn't win anything with Argentina. He's now got that. It's it's pretty like you know a fair like the bet seems mostly yeah. over in that regard, but and, and yet it's interesting because we spoke about the Ballon d'Or conversation, the fact that we're talking about an individual player who's the best player, and the first thing we do is look at trophies, and it's kind of like as I said, it's mm. a bit like the Ballon d'Or, where how much do you judge a player, especially like rugby, where it's 20, 23 players in a in a, in a match day a team and yeah. squad. You know how much are you judging the one player compared to the individuals around them, you know yeah. um you're talking about the greatest player to play the game you know the person and again yeah. some people and, and everybody's got different requirements you know is he the best all-round rugby player is he the player who is like the most important player to like the best side yeah. of the world for example and is he a player that can make, yeah there's so many different there's no set you know it's not like a hundred meter sprint he's the fastest yeah. man of all time no, no, no one no one's arguing you know? that Herschel Yankees is uh you know more complete rugby player than Andrew Dupont because he has a rugby World Cup. You yes know? exactly <laughs> but you know but it, 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 it does contribute to to that success when you are that person that everyone looks to and yeah you do get the team over the line it's like okay you 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 are that guy like fair yeah. enough no, exactly. So it's 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 uh, that's why I think it's a bit of a silly argument. That I think it's getting a little bit out of hand, but it's a fun thing to watch Twitter just have an absolute <laughs> meltdown. Dan, well, something I want to say talk about is the format because whilst we have benefits and therefore we are not going to complain, <laughs> I, I yeah. look at it and I think how how do you lose two matches in the groups in the group stages of three. <laughs> of three and go on to win a bronze medal like <laughs> it's phenomenal for us and it's a proper smash and grab but i just cannot understand why there weren't 16 teams yeah like i, like, I don't know what the benefit is you can 
you know, you can still get it in within the same time frame. Like surely it's not a scheduling issue. Um, yeah. I, I always just think when you create a more complex scenario for us, the supporter, to understand how it works, you know, come top two in your group. It's very easy to understand. You can you can yeah. know what happens. It's like points difference. If this game happens like that, you know, you're doing a lot of cross math. Um, yeah. Listen, it benefited even, us. We got through. Even the point system, you know, you got a point for losing. Yeah, yeah. Why? It's, like, it's literally yeah. a thanks for coming point. Yeah, like one point for losing, two points for draw, three points for win. I was like, yes, you guys spent a long time on this point system. <laughs> you know, no, like no, no, no bonus points for. I was just, it was the weirdest. I just looked at the format, thinking, you know, it's surely team sports these days. It's not difficult. You know, you go and sit there saying, cool, we won quarterfinals, which means it's eight teams. Cool, sixteen teams down to eight, down to four, down to two, down to you know it's not yeah. hard. I don't, I don't think it's particular. I mean, you could have added an extra four nations. There are those nations out there. You could have a Brazil playing a mm -hmm. you know a Chile a okay. uh, you know you, yeah you could have. You, there are more teams that could have been playing. You know, we had the Epicharge, which would have had four teams in there. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think that for me is a bit frustrating, and even it's almost a bit of a strange thing as well when it comes to the Olympics. You know, like having the the, the 9th to 12th place games, you know, for example, if it is a scheduling issue, but 9 to 12 games, if you don't go through, yeah, you don't yeah. go through. You know? <laughs> but that's, that's what happens. You go right now, yeah, you, you swim in a, in, a, in, a, in a heat, for example, yeah, and done. you don't come in the top 16. You're done. Cheers. Cool. Good. You're done. Like exactly. people exactly. go over there, you, you're out in the first round of tennis, cool, go home. Not not, not sit there for another four days playing to see if you can come around for 12. Exactly. No, you know that? you'd rather have more qualifying games and that be like then an elimination um, at a specific point, then yeah. be like, you know, people really aren't that interested in playing for the Olympic Knights. <laughs> can, can, you, can you imagine as a player, like, I mean, cool, you play for the Olympic Knights, you know, chances are you're a player that's just kind of happy to be at the Olympics. But can yeah. you imagine, for example, the Blitzbox going into that five to eight and you're going, cool, I'm just going to come back here on Saturday, run out and play for maybe fifth place, you know, yeah. which when you're a major contender, it's the last thing you bloody want to do. It's like third and no. fourth matches in the World Cup. Nobody wants to play that. Hundred um, percent. But yeah, I mean, I'm glad we managed to get it done. I mean, the well, defense. Let's, let's, let's move. New Zealand. Yeah, let's yeah. move. We, no, exactly. We, that that New Zealand defense insane. They were number one seed. We were number eight seed. So um, the way we held them out was was incredible, um, and was nothing like our first two games. And then mm. Australia. It was actually, I mean, it, it looks like it, 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 was not, it was nothing like our season, to be fair. And that's that's what I was saying. You know, we've had such a bad past two seasons, which is why I mean, I did a yeah. video a bit about the sevens are in trouble, and I do think that this result for me is like a papering over the cracks. We can't look at that seven side who've not fluked, but you know, got themselves a bronze uh, in in some very um unique circumstances and that, really that yeah sense. yeah and i think that it, it well, hopefully what those first two losses showed is that the seven side needs to have a look at actually, actually the structure and stuff like that because we have been on a bit of a downward trajectory since neil Powell left things have happened a bit better when chris name has come in but i think we do need to address those issues but um what we saw this weekend was was proper just you know adversity is South africa's biggest uh, fuel and we always talk about it yeah Exactly. And I think that was exactly. it. You know, they they, yeah, they put themselves that. in the corner, and when a South African side is in the corner, there's only oh, one way they get out of it. And that's they come out swinging. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I mean, it looks like we. To be fair, we almost tried to lose it versus Australia, um, mm. <laughs> in in that we were up by two tries and and a man up with their um, yellow card for high tackle field, allowing them back into it. I mean, they could if they got that kick over, they were two points up with like thirty seconds to play. Um, and then Selvin David selflessly, I mean, he broke the line selflessly giving it to, to Sean Williams. That was a beautiful moment. Um, but yeah, listen, on to the medal board, got the monkey off the back already. It's like, okay, the rest yeah. of the Olympic athletes, just go do your thing, you know? Don't worry yeah. about no, it. No, we, we saw we, some. We've got, we've got, yeah, and, and, and nice to get a medal on the first day where a medal was available, you know? There was the first, yeah. um, it was actually, I think we actually won the first team medal. Um, because obviously our game was before the the, the gold medal match, so we were the first yeah. team to win a medal at the Olympics. And uh, the nice thing about that, especially in the way you do it, is how inspiring is that for the rest of the athletes? Of like, listen, guys, it's not about like have that have that race of your life and, and have the mm -hmm. race of your life. Did Alan Hathley, who decided that he's also going to go and throw an extra little medal onto the also more to the point by the way, the last time a male won a medal for us was back in Rio. 
So it's been an oh, eight-year wow. wait before the Blitz Box and before Alan had to leave since we've had a, a, a men's medal. And, yeah. you know, no, I am now officially phenomenal. an expert in the men's mountain bike cross country, having watched an hour <laughs> and 25 minutes of it. But as always, as always. Yeah. Um, but, but what a, what a ride. And look, and he wasn't, I mean, oh. it's not a massive shock. I think he was ranked five, fifth, you know, we came fifth in the world champs, whatever. So he is, he yeah. was one of the ones to watch. You know, it's not like he's mm-hmm. come in ranked 60th, just had this phenomenal race. Nobody saw it coming. Um, but a proper yeah. gutsy, gutsy ride. Huge performance. And it, it was his third attempt at the Olympics. So he'd been to Rio and been to Tokyo. And in fact, in that Tokyo, um race of his he was pretty much down and out after three minutes after being involved in a crash and having to you know fix his bike essentially just ruled him out um of that so he he mentioned how he you know played it quite calm in the beginning wasn't making any like moves that were too ballsy Mm. but the big story was essentially uh, and the winner um pitcock from um great britain he was one who got got a puncture and yeah. actually was delayed by 35 seconds ended up down to 15 15th mm. and slowly and it was essentially the frenchman um koretsky and 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 hathley who were pretty much out on their own um and and hathley pretty like a like a 10 second gap between 10 and 20 and and he had mentioned that he was really going to wait for those last two <laughs> two laps to then you know put a lot of pressure on, on koretsky um not to not to even realize that um Pitcock out of nowhere came back, overtook him, then took the lead, um, and essentially resulted in by in the final lap, all three of them together. Hathley, you could just see he was barely holding on compared to them. Yeah, the, kind of could, like yeah it's just race. so uncomffortable. You know, you yeah, can see the pain in his face. He had given everything to just be in that yeah. top three. And um, and you know, it it looks like it was in sweltering heat as well, but I mean, there must have been, I think, three or four changes of that first position in the final lap. So it was really nail-biting stuff. And a final move that essentially um, was very quite controversial. And so a lot of the French fans thinking that Koretsky was cut off in the way that, um, what's his name, um, Pitcock came around and and took that lead with about you know 200 meters to go, um, receiving boos as he got on the podium. But we're not worried about that. We worried about um, Alan Hathley, first ever African cross country um, medal. It was the first Southern Hemisphere, and wasn't it? Yeah, it was the first Southern, Southern Hemisphere. Hemisphere I know it's first mm. African and yeah. second cycle or first cycling um, medal whatsoever since 1956. The last one was a a road sprint. Um, and that was before South Africa was in, uh, excluded from the Olympic Games. So, I mean, massive, absolutely massive from him. He's an eight-time South African champ. And, again, another bronze. Momentum, Stevie, momentum. Yeah, no, it's. I think, that, and, that, and that's the big thing, is that I don't think he was, from the, re- the previous stuff like I was reading, I don't think he was really touted as a, as, as a major medal contender. Um, and... Uh, um, yeah, the fact that he's that he's that he's thrown it's almost like a bit of a, that's a bit of a bonus medal, which which is always nice. Yeah, exactly. Um and 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 that and I think it's so cool to see that after Barry Stander, you know, I was talking about it yesterday when I did my review, back in 2012, you know, that heroic effort when he had to keep trying to get back into the lead, he ended up fifth, um, and then tragically died a year later. You know, it felt like that was almost like a, a an announcement yes, that we can be compared to this kind of event. So to go and medal in it, um, you know, 12 years later was was very cool. So so well done to Alan Hathley. He's 28 years old, was his, his, his third Olympics, had a bit of a tough time in Tokyo. So nice to come back and, and get the job done. Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. Dad, the, the story of the week is... The golden goal. The golden goal. The golden the goal. Golden, golden goal, Tatiana Smith. Uh, we spoke about this being her first Olympics. She had left Tatiana Schoenmacher behind her previously got um, the silver in this event and the gold in the 200 meter breaststroke, including the world record. But I mean, she looked hot from, from the beginning of her, of her heat, Stevie. She um, was only 18 splits off her Olympic record exactly the same time in both her first heat and semi-final, winning those both quite convincingly. But you can't say it was a convincing final. I mean, she looked down and out after that first lap. And we know she's come to be known for that second lap kick. And she did exactly that. It was her race. And she managed to just um, clinch gold at the final stretch. And essentially because she just timed that, um, that final stroke absolutely perfectly but when they hit the hit the wall it's one of those it's and you love it about swimming when you don't know which flag is going to pop up 
and it's yeah. pure um, elation when you see that South African won. So, I mean, you, you, you can't speak highly enough of her. No, and I think the funny thing is, and, and somebody mentioned is, is that she was so not really in it that the commentators basically didn't really mention her name from the yeah, get-go true. because I think, she, I think she turned fifth. Um, but you can almost see there was that aerial shot of them and you can just see her slowly progressing. And, and she is a, a it's the 200, that's her specialist. So she is a longer, uh, she's mm -hmm. not a sprinter. Uh, and so she's always going to have a stronger second leg. Um, so that's why, you know, it was, it was so cool to see her come through, but this is not her strongest event. You know, she, she got the Olympic record in this, but she said, I think it was in the semifinal back in Tokyo. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's the 200, which is, which has been an event, uh, you know, that's yeah. the one that she, she holds the world record and she dominated to that gold, yeah. um, back, back in Tokyo. So and this, this is always a medal chance for her, but, uh, you know, the world record holder was in the race. Exactly, um, Lily in, King in, in, in King, Lily King. So it was, yeah. it was. She was going to have to be at her best, and she just gave an, an interview about how, you know, she's a very quiet, introverted person, and all of a sudden she was thrust onto the the world stage, mm. and how she really struggled with that. She struggled with the the attention that she got, the pressure that came with being a two time, you know, uh, medal winner, a world a world record holder, um, and she's had a really really tough few years trying to come to terms with that. And I think the main thing I think that we always see this, and this is why it frustrates you when you see it in coaches and young things is that. Athletes always talk about how they're under so much pressure from the age like sort of 16 to 23, 24. And when they get a bit older, they start saying, and this is what she was saying last night, she's just loving her swimming again. She's enjoying yeah. it. And yeah. that, I think, is such an important thing that we 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 drill our athletes far too hard where the enjoyment side just gets left behind. And there's so much to be said for the people that make the comebacks, to come back and can do it multiple time and time again, how much they just love what they do. Mm -hmm. um you know and, and and it's not a chore for them you know they just they love the training i mean nobody loves yeah. training but they love to be involved they loved um getting a chance so that's the thing it looks like it's a happy tatiana she had a really nice moment with 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 her husband um when she came out before the medal actually and she she couldn't mm -hmm. wait she, you know as she walked past them she had to go around and say hello to everyone um i don't know if you saw that photo she got she had a t-shirt which said this was for you and it's just a yeah. list of like all the names 60 70 names response and stuff yeah. like that who, and who you know and and it, it's been well documented, but you love just seeing the all the Khaleesi names there. Khaleesi, didn't you? Yeah, obviously her her new husband Joel Smith is um, brother of uh, Rachel Khaleesi, who's married to the one and only Sia. Um, but even this, even the Khaleesi kids were were on that list. It was it's an yeah. unbelievable moment. And to be honest, so I've seen so many swimming events where it's been quite unemotional. Um, and and she does show that emotion and south africans do and you love it when they do because jeepers it it gets the it gets the it's a real tear joker um when you're watching that national anthem um just get played in, in the background and you know you just need to hear it once in the olympics it's always a shame when you you know you go through a whole olympics and you know your national right anthem hasn't been played anywhere yeah. um so she's done us proud once again the only person to get gold at the last olympics and once again backing it up in this one yeah, and it was it was an emotional um, podium because uh, um, Mona McSherry, the, the Irish athlete. I mean, she was. Yeah. I mean, you thought Tatiana was emotional after the win. She was. She didn't know what to do with herself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think first. I think first, first Irish, Irish medal, a gold medal. So I think it's actually first Olympic bronze, medal. Actually, I think bronze. it is. No, uh, I think Olympic medal. First, first, yeah, yeah, so first, first medal in swimming. I think I think ever it was ridiculous. Um, and then shame. I mean, the the person who was really out in front was um, Tang um, Quinting from China, and she, you could just see she had she had run out of gas by the end of it, and her stroke unfortunately just was so um, poorly timed by the end, which allowed um, that just inch in the door to be open for Tatiana to get through. But yeah, I mean, as as good as finals get to though, Stevie. Yeah, no, it was it was as I said the fact that we couldn't call any of it until until they're touched um that's that's what you want to see um and i'm just seeing here yeah talking talking about that just so we can get it right so it's her, it's the first um podium at the in the pool since 1996 wow um and she is just the 39th olympic medalist um since the game since since their first in time 28 from ireland so wow. yeah Incredible. it doesn't yeah, it's a pretty amazing moment for her as well. So, and, this, and those those are some of the stories you love to see. It's it's things like um, the 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 Romanian um, uh, yesterday, the swimmer um, who won their, the first male to win a medal for Romania. 
Wow. You know, so yeah, it's it, like it's, it's, it's historic. It's, like it really is. Like you, you can say you don't care or whatever, you're not you're not a fan of swimming or the Olympics, but cheap as if you're someone from your country's in the in the <coughs> final and you're watching, you're screaming your lungs out. And yeah. and he goes back a national hero. People will speak about his name forever. You know, yeah. like he's in the history books, and that's what the Olympics is about. It's the creme de la creme. Your history making. This is what you're there to do, and that's why it's so special. And the Olympics have actually managed to get away with not even paying athletes. You know, it's because it's just it's the yeah. reputation that is what you are playing for. It's 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 well above money. Um, it, it's something that you know you you're fighting for history books here. Yeah, no, and you can't exactly, and that Olympic medal. Uh, the little poster apparently you get to you know that's 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 it's it's your name in history you become immortalized you know exactly. um i think i think that's 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 the glory that comes that comes with it um but yeah let's let's move on to some of the other performance stuff i got hopefully more medals to come um i'll one of the one of the big sports is obviously um hockey field hockey if you're an american and you want to be very specific <laughs> um we've had a bit of a tough time so far um we've, been, we've had some good games but just frustrating results i think so if we look at uh, the the men's hockey um, they got beaten by the Netherlands 5-3 um, on Saturday, a team that we did beat in the last Olympics. We then drew 2-2 to go home to Great Britain right at the end. Um, very, very frustrating result that. Yeah. And uh, Head currently twice playing, in that game. Yeah, and, 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 and the big frustrating thing is, is that a, a call right at the end, um, which was missed, which resulted in, in the penalty corner, which results yeah. in the equalizer so frustrating yeah. um and they're currently losing 5-1 to germany at the moment so that's not going particularly well they do still play uh spain and france later on in the week and they need a fourth yeah. to to go through to the quarterfinals so two wins in those last two games could be enough and should be enough yeah. to be fair because we got that draw versus yeah. gg so um there, there is still hope and and i i have that open the men's team it's a really good generation of players i mean you're looking at someone like Dan Kasim. He is generational talent. Like he is world world um, class and world renowned. Just um, hasn't uh, really hit, hit his strides yet. This this World Cup, I mean Olympics yet. But um, I have faith that, that the boys can turn it around. Um, and it's also going to have to be a bit of a turnaround from the women's. Stevie, who were two 0 up versus Argentina, showing good signs. Unfortunately, went on to lose that one. 4-2 and then a nail biting um 2-1 loss to Australia um and there was a an incredible goalkeeping shown um by by, by the South African and also a, a great moment um when we got that equalizer to make it 1-1 so we're going to be playing GB Spain and then um USA and again um with those two opening losses um of the bounce we're going to have to at least get two wins there to to stand a chance of getting through but that extends all the way until um next week thursday so hockey will be around um for a while but hopefully we want to see ourselves in in, in that top half you know mm. quarterfinals is where anything can start happening in, in knockout sports and um you know there's talent there and there's been good signs unfortunately it just hasn't quite started as we would have hoped yeah, no, I think the I think the, we make the very good point in terms of to get yourself into those playoffs because that's when you can have those those sort of historic performances. Um, and especially when you, you know, for example, I, as I always say, for me, the quarterfinal is the important one. You know, get through the quarterfinal, and that gives you two more opportunities. You know, uh, a mm. semi final. You lose semi final, you go into the bronze. You you win the semi final, mm. and you go into the gold medal match. You guarantee the medal. Yeah. So hopefully one of the, one or both of those teams can get through. Um, elsewhere, unfortunately, Jordy Smith, who was an outside medal hope, um, he went out uh, last. I watched it last night in round three. Um, had a massive wipeout, and uh, unfortunately, the very good conditions needed to basically swim a nine point one wave, which is near perfect, um, and uh, just couldn't find the right wave, couldn't find the right ride to get him through. So he so he is, is officially out. Um, Sarah Bohm has been. Uh, is was moved so she's in round three i believe it is today um so she is our last remaining choice in the mm. surfing so so let's uh, hope that she can get herself into the i think it's the quarterfinals if she makes the pass this which once again you know um it would be, it would be amazing as she were to to get yourself into a medal is, is surfing would have been around for two olympics we would have won a medal in each yeah true, um, true. so who would have, i mean i, I mean, it kind of makes sense given the fact that we've got um jay bay and we've do got a very uh, we do have a very big surfing community but yeah i don't think if you told me five years ago that surf is going to becoming this like surfing powerhouse <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we would have yeah. been like oh yeah that makes sense yeah, we, we, we've never, like, 
we've been there and there about like we've always like Jordy Smith has probably been our most successful ever surfer. Yeah. Um, but um, probably less so in more more recent years on, on the circuit. But you know, Sarah Baum, go get it done. Obviously, this is obviously not happening in Paris. This is in um, Tahiti, um, in Chopu, uh, incredibly heavy wave. Um, but yeah, postponed um, last night. So hopefully again today. I mean, to be honest, with the times in Tahiti, I don't know what's going on. They're they're, they're ahead, right? Yeah, not very behind, age, yeah, yeah. Um, which is why, like, it ends up being like sort of from seven o'clock to like midnight, which is like yeah. in the morning over there. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then a real unfortunate story, Stevie. Um, Caitlin Roosevelt, unfortunately, well, one of our two South African flag bearers in the opening ceremony, mm-hmm. ended her foot during her floor exercise competition in the gymnastics. Um, on Sunday, she had to go for, uh, she had to pull out of that initially and go for an MRI. And unfortunately, that is confirmed that uh, she has a ligament injury to her midfoot, meaning that she's had to pull out of the games. Um, I mean, she's she's made history at the last Olympics. She was our, she's the first ever um, South African gymnast of color, and and you know now being recognised for um, her like you know amazing performances. Now being a, a flag bearer, and, and it's such a pity that she wasn't able to really um, you know finish what she started. And came here for but stephanie still has another olympics in her so she'll be back um but just 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 a sad one when you see these athletes you know get to the peak of um their performance and peak conditioning just for um something small to slip up and then it's you know it's all done you have to now wait four years um but she'll be back we have no we have um full faith in her and i'm sure she'll be um you know a massive influence from the side nonetheless um then it was last night, Stevie. We had um, Peter Kutsia also in the pool. Um, the youngster um, by his Instagram handle, it's dripking slash H2O. Um, if that now, now you're wondering whether he's involved in swimming or not, now you know. Um, yeah. But he, um, on his way to making it to the final, had already broken the African <coughs> record. and Which and was his record. Had, which was his record. So, I mean essentially came to the Olympics and just up the ante and up the ante. Yeah. And then in the final, which was incredibly close, ended up coming fifth. So, you know, swimming again, breaking the African record twice now at the Olympics from his three races. Um, he swam a, um, a record two, six, three um, in those um, in, in, in the final. So um, an unbelievable effort from him and um, the highest ever finisher, um, it's also the African finisher in that event. So, um, yeah. a, a huge effort, and he, and he still has a couple of races to come. Yeah, well, I, I think too. Apparently, uh, watch out for him in the two hundred meter. Is 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 the chat uh, also twenty years old? Group. Yeah. So I mean, um, he's got years and and many Olympics ahead of him. And you, yeah, we've the, always been competitive having... in swimming. It's very yeah. very consistent and, and talented swimmers from South Africa. So it's always nice knowing who the next generation is. And now we've seen yes. him announce himself. So we're seeing him. We're seeing the likes of of Matthew States, for example, who unfortunately is, is, has gone out in the two hundred uh, butterfly in the first round, but um, still has the two hundred IM and the hundred meter butterfly as well. We'll be swimming alongside the likes of Chad Leclerc, makes a sort of big return that he reckons can be competitive. Um, so other swimming to look forward to, for example, Tatiana uh, Smith has got a two hundred meter breaststroke. That is her event. Uh, I think the uh, uh, the heats are on thursday if i'm not mistaken and in theory she'll be swimming on friday night in that final um to try and hopefully make go double gold um mm. i trying to work out i don't think we've ever had somebody go two golds um from from a certain perspective i'll, I'll have to try mm. and check that but i yeah, certainly from when i've been watching um during during our generation i don't think we've ever had somebody go to especially individual goals as well as opposed to a gold and a relay yeah. for example but yeah. i mean you go back and you think 2004 athens was the was the relay team that was what 2008 and we only came back with like two silvers. No, we came back um, with one silver. That was a long, one silver, long, long, long jump. jump. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. But, I yeah, and, and also not not only that, but she's now for the next Olympics put herself up in contention for the three-peat, which uh, we saw Adam Peaty try to get for the... Well, if, well, if she, well, 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 she has to do this event first. She has to win this well, no, first. Oh, yes, sorry. She did yeah, because she won the silver in the 100. Now yeah. she's won the gold in the 100. She wins the, the gold in the, the 200 on Friday. Then a 3 p comes on, which is something that uh, does not happen easily uh, unless she knows Michael Phelps. Um, yes. He has done one. And then somebody, somebody, I think one of the women's swimmers has won four in a row. Um, but just before we move on to other other sports stuff like that, speaking on, on the swimming... Um, 
incredible story yesterday. 17 year old Summer McIntosh winning a gold for Canada yeah. in the 400 meter. I mean, can you imagine be 17 years old? I mean, we've seen medalists at that age, but in like gymnastics and stuff like that, yeah. it's insane looking at something like a 400 meter IM, which is not a short race in a in a in a, in a sport like swimming, where you know it's it it. Sometimes you do see like a boys against men type of thing, but we are seeing a whole different generation and 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 people getting yeah. faster and faster as they're younger. And it's so interesting to see how how young some of these these athletes are in yeah. in in events where traditionally sort of early twenties, mid twenties, even late twenties, kind of where you sort of peaking. Yeah. And now we're seeing athletes at all ages going through and uh, and, and and dominating. And Chad Lecro actually came out and said, and he said, with all due respect, the kids these days are blowing everything out yeah. of the water. They are going to be better than Michael Phelps, he said. And he said mm -hmm. he, he has the utmost respect for Phelps and, and everything he's done, the, the greatest Olympian of all time. But yeah. these swimmers, and a lot of it people are saying is not just put down um, to the technology of the pools and creating less ripple. And there's been a lot of conversation actually at this one because it's not like maybe typical of, of other Olympic pools because mm. it's just been put in an and otherwise um, stadium that's been used for rugby by rutting. But the the underwater analysis that you are now able to do and yeah. and, and, and and look at someone's and, and sports science and it's, yeah, you know, it's, exactly. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're now in generation. This is like this is not just a swimming, this is a sports thing, analysis and sports. I have we are now talking about, and this is the thing when, like, for example, when people say, Oh, rugby's gone soft, sports across the world is currently being played at the highest level <laughs> and almost everything it has ever been played. It is more physical, it is faster, quicker, stronger. you know, bigger, strong. Yeah. It's no matter whatever the sporting discipline is. It's never been played at a higher level because mm. of the technology, the analysis, the what we can do now mm. with things, and and it's that's why we're going to see. I mean, you know, even things like you know, like for example, it's a bit like when we had the, when they had the full length um, costumes. You know, I think it was back in two thousand eight yeah. in Beijing, and all the records started tumbling and they had to outdoor them. You yeah, know, yeah, shoes, yeah. for example, shoes that have to have to have been banned because they're too quick, and uh, you know, it's it's really such an interesting thing. I mean, for example, if if you can go to the Olympic Channel, there's a lot of videos doing comparisons on like nineteen fifty versus like now, and you go look at like the 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 artistic gymnastics, and you know they're barely doing a, like a a flip. If you're going yeah. back and looking in the 50s, and now the people are doing like triple axles and, yes, and it's yeah. stand and the stuff like that, it is absolutely mental. So records are there to be broken, and the new generation are going to break a lot of them. 100%. 100%. Um, and we hope that Tatiana includes herself in that conversation when she takes yeah. on her own record um, in, in the 200 meter breaststroke coming up. But Steve, a couple more that we have coming up is mm. the triathlon and it's been a massive talking point of this whole olympics um for those who haven't heard essentially a big part of um france's and paris's bid to host this olympics said they were going to host the swimming in the river seine and the river seine hasn't been um you know healthy to swim in because of sewerage and as a result you know if you go swim in it people getting you know E. coli and and all, all the diseases you don't want but yeah correct we, we're going to invest 1.2 billion for context that's um pounds pounds, yeah, pounds, yeah, pounds so. yes and that's 27 billion rand into this um massive project that's going to have the scent in a state that is ready and going one step further the um it was not the prime minister it paris was, mayor it was the mayor who said, "Still alive, by the way." Has anybody said will, anybody heard from her recently? <laughs> well, she said, "I will swim," and she did last week, Friday, I believe it was. She was there swimming she, in the Seine. She, she didn't and, give it a a, a a particularly good review. She said, "Yeah, it doesn't feel particularly clean, but it's not too bad." And you're going, <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm sure, I'm give sure everyone else confidence. But yeah, that that, that 1.2 or 27 billion rand investment essentially went into this massive a massive water tank, right? And the issue with the sewage is that when there's a lot of rain the existing sewage tanks overflow and it goes into the river and that's why you can't swim in it naturally yeah. this is not like common common practice so they built an even bigger one like bigger than anything before this massive tank underground to now um you know catch more and more sewage so it didn't overflow in spite of that there's been so much rain and we saw that at the opening ceremony and in the first weekend um in paris that it has in fact overflowed and there is sewage going down the seine now 
after um, the mayor's initial swim. So they've had to push back the triathlon. And they actually only have a couple, I think it's two more days that they can push it back, Stevie, um, I believe, until um, they actually then just have to leave the swimming out of it. So it actually becomes a duathlon, which just is cycling and running, which is just a crazy aspect. It's like, imagine just banning backhands in tennis. It's just like, you know, like, what? That's, that's just not the sport, you know? Yeah. It's like, unfortunately, it's just, you, you can't do them. Yeah. You, you I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like doing like a heptathlon or a duathlon. Be like, listen, the track's broken. So we're not doing any running events. It's just, <laughs> just become a field event thing. And you're going, well, great. Like, I'm yeah. a runner. So that, that, that really helps. Um, and that, and that doesn't help our boys because we've got, uh, so first of all, the men's triathlon is supposed to be to this morning. And Henry Schumann, who is an Olympic bronze medalist, won it back in Rio. He's also a Commonwealth gold medalist back 2018. Um, he is our, he is, um, rank, currently ranked 79, but he is, he is, is our, uh, our golden Season boy, really. Now. Um, and uh, then we've got a youngster, James Riddle, who's 24 years old. He's 47. They were supposed to go out this morning, so that's obviously must postponed tomorrow. And the reason it's supposed to postponed like half past 10 is because the women's triathlon is supposed to be tomorrow, <laughs> where we've got a woman in Vicky van der Merwe, 31st. So the three of them, I mean, what do you used to, I mean, literally, I mean, like, so the only reason I knew it was postponed this morning I woke up, first thing I did was around to Instagram at about um, half past six, and I saw James Riddle, who I followed on Instagram, still in the story saying, well, it's been postponed, so... <laughs> Like, what do I do now? Type no, of thing. Like, can you imagine sitting there going, okay, so basically if I swam in the river today, I was basically going to die. <laughs> so, which is a bit dramatic, but it's still, 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 but you know, it's because there's literal shit in the river. And now, cool, I'm just going to swim in it tomorrow instead because then it'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, you talk about these athletes also just trying to get mentally ready, right? Like you, yeah. But on your way, physically, physically you you'll have like a taper down period. A eh? this is what yeah. I do before yeah. my day. I'll, I'll warm up, but you don't overdo you it. You have all the sports it's... science that goes into it. Like yeah, it's day by day, hour by hour, specific nutrition and everything. If it's tomorrow, it's not good. Like I mean, it does count for everyone. So I guess it's just it's a level playing field in that sort of sense. But if they cancel the swimming. It's really not because um, Henry Skuman, it's meant to be his strongest um, event of all three. So mm. immediately at a disadvantage. Yeah, so it's a bit of a bit of a disaster. Um, <laughs> and, you know, this Paris Olympics is is proving to be a very interesting one. As I said, we've had people booing on the podiums. You know, the Blitzbacher were booed throughout the, the sevens. Um, you know, because, yeah. You know, not that they still sour about last year or anything. No. Um, so it's 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 going to be an interesting Olympics when when we do the Olympic review. One thing I will say is that have you seen some of the venues? The venues look and and the crowds oh, are phenomenal. The crowd, so, yeah, the crowd. It's, it's been very well supported, and they've really got behind it. Uh, when they're not booing, it's been great. But some yeah. of the venues, I mean, that, that beach, that volleyball venue, no, right by the good. Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Yeah, and and to be honest, I'm gonna have to try and sneak into that one when I'm there next weekend because that's gonna be right on my hit list. And obviously, prioritize Khadistan. I'm gonna be there, see you at the front of the yeah. pack. But um, otherwise, it's just gonna be roaming fan parks to see see what you can get hold of because I mean, tickets are also a bit ridiculously uh, priced. But you know, if you if you can find some some these niche events as we love about the Olympics, um, it's kind of what it's all about. I mean, mm. I saw it was I think it was sixty six thousand people watched the women's sevens um, on I think it was two days ago, record number. And you know, unfortunately, our women's team haven't quite given it their best showing. Uh, although it is their first Olympics, um, they've gone down and, and I believe have one more game, but. You know the the fact that it does get that support is incredible. Um, mm. You know, and and that's it's much more sad when you see those empty you see those empty stadiums. Um, yeah. You know, even the, the the fact that the swimming is in a rugby stadium and it yeah. is so noisy that the presenters can't hear themselves speak. It's it's like mm. the, this is what it is what you want. It's it's you know it's almost like the gladiators, and and that's what I feel like the Olympics is. Yeah. No, it's, it's 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 there's a reason why it's the coolest event. It is because it's it's yeah. it's so diverse. It's so it's so many different stories, so many different types of people, different body types, different mm. um, ages, different countries doing our good at different things. You know, reasons got, to win. Yeah, you know, from from from. I mean, I, I, I mean, I think they're saying that you know, there's a record number of like 
parents and it's like kid commerce, like you know, kids who've parents who are Olympians and gold and winners now, for example, you know, following in their footsteps, a lot of that's starting to happen as well. Um, so you know, that's completely different to somebody who's come from you know nothing and, and this is now their opportunity to to be somebody who nobody would ever heard on and put themselves on the, on, on the front front uh, page of newspapers and stuff mm. like that. So it is what makes the, the Olympics so special. And we've seen some very, very cool stories already. Um, we mentioned Thomas Pitcock winning with a spider puncture, you know. Mm. Um, Djokovic beating Nadal on, on clay yesterday was, wasn't was great. But no. Rafael Nadal, one of the most successful Olympians, uh, and uh, is, is, is playing double with Carlos Alcaraz, you know, the heir to be. Um, mm -hmm. They threw to the next round. I mean, how phenomenal of a story would it be if Rafael Nadal, who's set to retire, about to retire, I think this is this yeah. is his thing. He pulled out of Wimbledon because he said he wants to come and finish with a medal. Uh, if those two go and, and win a gold, yeah. for example, it's and <clears throat> and they could be up against another um, swan song story, which is Andy Murray and Dan Evans. Andy Murray retiring after mm. after this, and I mean they barely scraped through in one of the matches um, of the tournament so far being five match points down, maybe in a tie break and just you, nothing but clutch from them. So I hope they're not on the same side of the draw. I actually haven't checked, but imagine that being your final. I mean, you're talking, now you're talking eyes um, on, on TVs, you know, that, that, that is historic. Um, but as you say, there, there've been some incredible stories. And speaking of a bit of the chaos that's gone on, the Morocco versus Argentina game. Let me give you just a little bit of context around this. So, um, it was Morocco winning 2-1 with, um, you know, in, in, the, in the final minutes, 95 minutes played. I believe they'd actually just gone over the extra, the allotted extra time already. So, you know, the Morocco fans who had been, who were packed in the stadium, um, you know, pleading for the final whistle, not to be and <clears throat> Argentina get that 2-2 equalizer. Morocco fans are losing it. They flood the stadium and, um, you know, in protest and the, the players are, are told to to kind of get off the field, get to the changing rooms, you know, not deemed safe for them to be there. They, It's all there. Everyone assumes now the game is done, you know. the mm. it's Now it's been uh, officially put on the Olympic website. FIFA acknowledged it as full-time, but that's not to be. So everyone, they clear out the stadium and two hours later, Stevie, they announce no, we're going to come back out and play three more minutes of football. Not only that, in these two hours, we have looked at VAR and that equalizer by Argentina was actually offside. So it's actually still 2-1 to Morocco. So then they go out to an empty stadium to proceed to, you know, they're given like 10 minutes to go then warm up again because now it's been two hours since they, they played football and Morocco managed to close out the game. 2-1 win. But... I mean, I don't, I don't recall an event as chaotic as that. It would have been unreal if it was like a final for the gold. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, so, so some incredible stories that we've seen just um, all, all around. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a bit. I mean, that kind of thing is slightly farcical, isn't it? Really, um, to go back two hours later and play like three minutes of football. Um, but I suppose what else? What else do you do? But Dan, this weekend. You know, we've, I mean, as much as the first, the first, I feel like the first week of Olympics is about swimming, it's about watching fencing, handball, volleyball, enjoying it. And then we get into your, your big one, you know, your, yeah, your, yeah, and that is, that is the athletics which starts this weekend. And uh, oh, this week, yeah. this week, Sunday, I believe it is, is the biggest event of the Olympics. And that is the 100 meter final um and uh, we've actually got a very big track and field team that's gone by the way we've actually got some field mm. athletes which is quite cool um we have we've yeah it's a big it's a big contingent um you look at for example our field athletes um mm -hmm. carl blickner we all know him he's in the shot put we've got two men in the discus throw we've got two women in the shot put uh joanne van dyke is the next big javelin thrower we've got two men in the long jump in joanne van fear and cheswell johnson and brian Roth in the men's high jump which is one of the coolest events to watch mm -hmm. um so always cool and 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 just a, a less than a month since the tragic passing of Jacques Freitag, who was uh, one of our one of the high, uh, high jumpers back in the day. Hefty Kuti won, won two Olympic medals in high jump. Uh, those two were jumping at the same time. So cool to be back in there. And then we've got a stack of runners. Um, mm. Way from the Kirk, uh, running in the in the two hundred, um, Benjamin Richardson hundred and two hundred. Yeah. Um, but the big one we're going to talk about. I'm going to predict on it. So maybe this is a nice way to go into our predictions here, Dan. Let's get into your predictions, yeah. And, uh, 
Yeah, the big one. The, the and yeah. it's so cool. And and I'm so chuffed. We've got a Benjamin Rich Richardson who is trending in the. And I mean, he's a youngster. He's 20 years old, I think. Um, because it's been so cool having a Connie Simbi competing in the big one. You know, we grew up not watching South African sprinters. Yeah, we yeah. Did, you know, I, the first time we saw South African sprinter was probably Simbini really, you know, in terms of getting to those those those, those um, semis and, and in the final. Um, and it's been really cool to to see that the gold generation of sprinting is continuing in the likes of a Sean Masangani, who's in the second Olympics, in yes. a Benjamin Richardson, who's, you know, point yeah. zero two um, seconds off of a Connie Sambini's national record. So you kind of get to feel that that, he, that will be broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also um, like there, there's a little internal battle there. Like a kind of, yeah. you know, he's been the the guy um, who has just held the South African, you know, flown the flag of, of what sprinting is to for, for us. And now he, he's got a couple youngsters that are coming mm. through. Nonetheless, the um, youngster who is still in school um so i mean and and one of our most um our, our best events is going to be the four by 100 so really really excited for that but let's quickly let's make this um prediction stevie and and it's going to be where kind of be their places in in the um in the 100 meter and we're just going to introduce this by going through a couple of the the favorites for um the the 100 meter and he is currently um sitting in seventh I believe seventh favorite with only three percent, but from the top, it's Kashane Thompson from from um, Jamaica with a forty percent chance. He um, beats out Lower Niles, who a lot of people are speaking about um, in from USA, and he he's been showing really strong form recently. Um, and then it's Oblique Seville from Jamaica coming in third with twelve percent. Um, let's see there. Um, Tobojo from Botswana, an absolute beast. And I reckon he has a strong chance of mm -hmm. not only getting it um, on the podium for the 100 meters, but I think the 200 meter could be his race because he has just got the most calm running um, technique you, you've ever seen. It's just so effortless. Of course, we have um, Marcel Jacobs from Italy. He has a 4% chance. He is the reigning current, uh, mm -hmm. current Olympic champ from, from Tokyo running a 980 flat. Um, then it's Fred Curley from USA with 3% and followed by Kani Sambine in 3%. So him coming in seventh. And then the last one is Ferdinand Omanyala from Kenya. Actually, previously a rugby player at university, a winger. People spotted that he had a bit of gas to him and they're like, bro, you got to go sprinting. And as you had mentioned before this, TV, how cool that we're seeing a Kenyan that's in the sprinting category. Yeah. No, not, 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 not. I mean, we, I, mean, I was always laughing because we're looking at the medal table and uh, it's one of those things we don't see Kenya. And by the time we get to the end of the Olympics, we see a lot of Kenyan golds and silvers and bronzes. Um, but in your 10,000s, your 5,000s, your 800s, your 1500s, your marathons, for example. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't often see a Kenyan in the 100 meter. You know, 400 meters, maybe kind of where we might see a couple yeah. and, and 800 meters where they, but you know, 100 meters, they're, they're not, they're not known for their explosiveness. You know, it's a long mountain to run over in the morning. It's not a, not a sprint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. So, exactly. Right. Well, there we go. So we've got, we've got the odds here, Dan. And do you have a, we're going to do, we're going to predict a position for a Carnes and Beanie. Then we're going to go and predict a position for our 800 meter upcoming star prudence, Seco Diesel, and our final. Um, prediction is going to be where our men's hockey are going to finish in the, the mm. group. So now you know the three predictions. 13-12, Dan Skulls needs to make a move here. If he goes yeah. down to 14-12, then things will get dicey. And, Dan, and do you have... Yeah. <laughs> no, it's this is the time where you need to use head over heart, but you just know you can't use head over you heart. Not, not for the Olympics, dude. Not, it's every four years, dude. And look what happened years. to you. You used, you used heart over head for the blitz box, yeah. and look what happened. So... Um, yeah, I'm ready. Let's start with the Akani Sambini STV. Right. Have you got a? Yeah, I've got a number. I've got a number. A position. Yeah. Right. So we're going to. So yeah, we're just going to go position there, eh? like third, second, yeah, third, whatever. Position. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's go to it. Three, two, one, fifth, third. <sighs> you you think he's meddling, eh? Bro, you eat lot in. Rio fifth, Tokyo fourth. It's 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 match made in heaven. It's just yeah, look, I hope I Britain. hope I hope you're right. I one hundred percent hope you're right. Yeah, I just yeah. have a very um, bad feeling about it. I don't know why. 
Um, I actually think that I'm really hoping that Benjamin Richardson is the surprise package. Yeah, it would be amazing if he makes the final. Um, I mean, I mean, in any other South African to, to join him. But yeah, that four by 100, yeah. I mean, you will definitely see him there. Okay, Stevie, well, let's move on to Prudence Sekhudiso, the 800 meter um, youngster who has really burst onto the scene in the last Sweet. couple of years. Um, and a lot, of, lot spoken about her and her future success, but perhaps current success. Um, have you got a mm. position in mind for where you think she, she will I do. finish? Do you want to count us in? I count us in. Three, two, one, eighth, fourth. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Sure. I mean, again, it's like, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. But yeah, so if you look at the odds, she's the odds have her coming sixth in theory, if the odds were to play yeah, out. So we, we, we've both gone like two on each side of that. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, and she's, I been running, think... she's been running a lot of sub twos. I think it's like seven sub twos, um, two minutes, 800 meters this year. Um, she needs to get to like the 155 to like really get into yeah. that gold. But, you know, I think she's... Like, fast, like I'm very interested to see what, what the track is going to play. I mean, the, the, the nice thing is that this is... I mean, Stade de France is not a, a new track, for example. It's not a track that's been built, a stadium that's been built. So I'm very interested to see what the time is going to be like, whether this is going to be a fast track, a slow track. Mm -hmm. um, I just think that uh, that, that Carson is going to phone her and say, listen... And and Rash is going to phone her and say, "Listen, <laughs> and you know we're going to operate." And and I think I'm hoping that she's going to be the surprise package. I really think if there's one person I'd really that. like to see um, step up a game, 22 years old as well, so I feel like age wise she's primed to be able to do that step up performance. Mm, 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 mm. Um, and also, the 800 meter is that the, is that you know it's it's an interesting event because it's it's a race. 100 meters is a race, but it's just, you know, you slightly off the charts, you know, you don't really get to look right on the focus. You just focus on yourself though. There's nothing yeah, about you, other competitors. There's no real strategy. Correct. It's just blitz. Yeah. Whereas an 800 meters is far more strategy. For example, Castleman used to always go out strong um, mm -hmm. and it was about whether she could, she could hold on. So I think that that as well means that there can sometimes be a bit more uh, room for surprise in terms of, can you run within yourself and then have the gas, or do you and need hand, to go out in front? Yeah. And, and can there, um, can can you get it all in there? Yeah, it's it's a massive mind game, um, one. And and you, these these um competitors know how to you know essentially mentally beat the comp the the opposition. And Custer used to say how she how uncomfortable she'd make off opposition feel whilst they were warming up, staring them down, making sure that they knew that she was looking at them and almost beat them in the mental game before the race began. Um yeah. so hopefully you know th this is like a, a massive moment. 22 years old, you've probably got two more Olympics in you if you keep it on at this rate. Um so a massive showing here will go a long way and become, you know, the na a national hero. So, I'm yeah, really excited for for her um, growth and, and to see how she does in, in that 800 meters. Stevie, the final one is the men's hockey. And the prediction is where they're going to finish in the group. So, um, obviously, at the moment, it's only um, one draw and two losses um, with a goal difference. Now, particularly after that Germany um, game, it's not looking great. Um, I think we negative six now. Yeah. So, but we've got two more for France and Spain. Um, have you got a prediction in mind? I do. I do. Okay. I'm ready for you. You count us in. Okay. Three, two, one, fifth. Fourth. Okay. You're not, you say we're not making it. Uh, yeah, wow. I've got a bad. Yeah, we'll wow, see. Wow, 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 wow. Maybe that's my, my inner hockey player bias, but I'm willing to have that bias. So, Stevie, I mean, on, on the face of it, I'm the more, I've gone with the heart more um, than you, but we'll, we'll, we'll see which one comes out on top. I mean, it would be great if, 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 I mean, if all of our predictions come, like the best prediction and the best finish comes right, I don't think either of us. This is the one prediction one where I'm not, I wouldn't be too sad. You know, if I'm yeah. making a prediction wrong for England West Indies game, I'm irritated because I didn't have any skin in the game there. You just got to yeah. hit the bang on the head. Um, but these one, there's absolutely, there's massive skin in the game. So, yeah, let, let, let's see how that one goes. Um, but sure, what an episode, Stevie. Olympics, it is here. Yeah, no, it's, and, and, and we've only got one more podcast for the end of the Olympics because that's blooming quick. 
Um, so yeah, if you are watching this, make sure that you go and get as much in the big watch in because remember this 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 uh, this ends next weekend. Uh, the eleventh, I think, eleventh yeah. is is the closing ceremony, and then we enter the Paralympics. Yeah. So not a lot of time. So make sure that you are watching all your highlights. Make sure that you um, jump into our calendar that we are doing. So if you have not seen it, we've got a calendar yeah. running. So go and check that out. Follow and, us on Instagram uh, between two yeah, fans works. number two, and we we're, we're updating that constantly. We you only get the podcast once a week, unfortunately. But that Instagram, it's live and it's we, we, we've got all the updates there. So anything South African sports related, obviously now big emphasis on the Olympics. But go go and follow us, follow us there. Show support and download that calendar. It's got every single South African event synced yeah. straight to your calendar. You can move those meetings around. When you're at the brow of the weekend, tell them, listen, I'm out. I can't. We, we, we can't come at two. It's going to have to be three o'clock because, you know, yeah. or, us, or else we'll come here at Hoppers One and you better have a TV ready to go. Exactly. You know? exactly. So plan your brows and, and the likes. You know, um, I'm, I'm planning on uh, potentially pulling out the big ass projector for having to be a final on, on Sunday. You know, mm. you're going to watch these things in style. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah, no, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be electric, Stevie. I'm I'm very very excited. Um, but thank you everyone for listening. Um, great great episode, and we appreciate your support. Please share this with your fellow South Africans who need to be informed about what's happening in the world um, of sports, mm -hmm. particularly the Olympics. Um, you know these athletes deserve every single piece of our um, our support. They've been grinding it out for four years, getting to this moment. The least you can do is show a bit of support you know mm. know what's going on share this with people and by virtue of that it helps us and them it grows the sport every it benefits everyone hurts no one yeah correct correct cool then well keep up everybody else we'll see you guys all soon and uh yes there's been another episode between two fans and uh, we'll see you guys all next time